Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. So you might be hearing a lot about how Motorola's UI is very similar to stock Android and is very clean. Now I have heard that a lot and this is the first time in a long long time I'm using a Motorola phone. Granted that this is a budget offering from Motorola so some things might be present or might not be present. But that got me thinking about how different is it from the stock Android that Google provides at least in Android 12 in this particular scenario. So that's what we are going to find out in this particular video. Trust me it's going to be really interesting. The similarities are definitely there mostly in a good way and there are differences which actually make the Motorola software stand apart and add a few things into the pixel experience which enhances the experience overall on Motorola's My UX. So that's where we're gonna find out. I'm running Android 12 L stable version which is with the May security patch on the Pixel 6 Pro. But in Motorola's case, it does not have Android 12 L. That's something to keep in mind. But Android 12 L is primarily targeted towards larger devices. So I don't expect it to come down, especially to the budget device. But this is running April's uh, security patch as of now. So that's when the comparison is happening. Keep that in mind. Also, some features might be missing for example Motorola does offer something called as ready for which is a desktop interface for Android like similar to how Samsung's Dex works out so these are things you do not get in the pixel as of now now if you like such content definitely make sure to like this particular video subscribe to the channel by the way and make sure you're notified because my full review of the Motorola G52 is gonna come soon it's gonna be an interesting one for me at least with that said this shares and let's take that out So here I have the two phones, the Pixel 6 Pro and the G52. One thing again to keep in mind is that the, the G52 is a budget device so some features might not be present in this particular version but might be available in some more expensive or flagship offerings from Motorola. Now Google Pixel 6 Pro is the best device that is available from Google themselves. So I'm going to cover the similarities first and the differences next. So the first thing is the UI looks. Now of course as you can see over here the folders and the animations especially over here is very very similar and almost the same if i go into the clock and go back home the animation sinks into the widget which is similar and if i go into the quick uh, tiles and the notification shade as well it's pretty good it's the same and you can see almost similar tiles or and at least if not similar animations over here the next thing if we go into the settings again it gives a very similar look and the categorizations also are almost similar few differences here and there but they are very minute not really something that will matter also if we go into the recents card it looks almost same although these have rounded corners and these have boxier corners so even if i go to the end of the list you can see over here clear all in a similar way the next thing is app opening and closing animations you can see over here it's very similar it again sinks into the same icon on the left you have the google pane which most android phones do nowadays or at least has an option to do so the next thing is widgets for the clock which is offered by stock android so if i go into the clock section here you can see there are five options the arrangement is a bit different but the options are exactly the same so over here you can again see the number of options are also same now continuing with the theme of customizations let me just change the same wallpaper over here let me go to backdrops and set this same wallpaper now even over here you get dynamically changing widget colors which was not there before in other android 12 skins as well i tried it on the oneplus 10 pro with oxygen os 12.1 so that's something awesome so this is how it is very similar in terms of the apps and there are two apps which are very similar one is the clock app it is exactly the same and also in terms of basic features everything looks and feels the same so let's go to the regular clock timer stopwatch and in bedtime mode also the settings are almost the same the next thing is going to be the calculator app so if you go in here into the calculator app this also is exactly the same there are literally no differences you can pull down the shade to see the history and you can click over here to see the additional features or functions over here and overall the user experience and the usage is almost similar as well and it's very easy for you to go around the ui and navigation of the motorola device if you are used to a pixel already 
these are overall the similarities but again the differences also exist and the differences are a bit more deep into the ui unlike the similarities the next difference is in the home screen customization now first of all in pixels you have this particular google widget and the at a glance widget fixed you cannot move them around which people might like or dislike so you don't have an option with that here over here instead you can add these particular widgets although the at a glance widget over here is a bit different it still exists and gives you similar results so for example if i go into google this is the at a glance widget now the only difference is that it is not at the corner over here as you can see it will be on the top and taking up so much space the next difference is in the customization so if you see over here we have options for personalize over here which is not present here but if i go into the wallpaper and styles you can see the different material you configurations you can have over here the wallpaper is just for choosing the wallpaper only so to customize colors or something like that you should go to personalize and you get a host of options now the app grid layout is similar you get similar options over here to be honest but if you go back this is where it changes now if you remember in android 11 in even in the pixels you had similar options like changing the font and it looks exactly the preloaded fonts which were there colors is the part where you can change the material you color theming from here also you have your option of basic colors which is a different tab over here you have customization for icon shapes you can see it over here very clearly so that's something which you cannot do on pixels at the moment so for the pixel you have to go over here and then you get font size and display size differently the next thing is system theme now this again you have a toggle over here for dark theme and light theme so similar but not exactly and the next thing is you can customize themes completely over here in the themes you can make presets of changing all of these options with the wallpaper and keeping it as a preset over here so if i let's say i want to create a new theme for example i can choose wallpaper its individual font so let me just change the font just for example then let me go to the basic colors which i might want from this particular wallpaper then you can choose the icon shape now the grid size and the ringtones now you can create a separate theme like this and keep it as a preset when you just check mark it it should get applied and everything should change accordingly so let's just go back and you can see all the changes have been implemented so you get a lot more customization options on motorola as per now the next thing is something different which is in that app drawer you could add and create folders over here which you do not have an option on pixels as of now so over here you can see just some examples i have set over here so i can make another folder also over here you can just name your folder add the necessary apps you would want in that folder and you're done now the thing is about the search bar over here so let's say i search for something like selfie okay i get no results over here but the thing over here is you get contextual options from the system itself in the pixels and this is something different which does not exist in motorola as of now coming to widgets there are some differences like you do not get access to widgets like this particular uh, battery widget over here you do not have that simply and also there are a couple of widgets which you do not get over here which is the weather widgets from google these are not present in motorola my ux as of now another small thing is the always on display so if i go to the home screen over here you can see the always on display with the icons over here which come up motorola in this model at least does not have always on display it does have an ambient mode you can see over here and you get contextual options when you hold down this so you can see the contents and dismiss the particular notification right from the lock screen which could be nice and actually i kind of like this implementation of the always on display you get contextual options like replying liking messages and stuff like that if it comes from instagram or twitter so these are really nice additions by motorola to there so there is a large number of differences in terms of the gestures over here so let me go into system then gestures so yeah you have obviously double tap to launch camera and you have a triple tap option for the power key as well then 
you obviously have the same one handed mode as it is there on stock android now the next thing is power touch so this has a capacitive fingerprint reader on the side so you can just double tap over here on the capacitive fingers to get some menus and you can completely customize this so if i go into here you can just go into the settings of the same and go to the shortcut list and change them so the next thing is you have three finger screenshot you can just place your fingers over here and the screenshot will come up over here you do not have anything like this you have to use the volume buttons primarily but in the pixel you do get options for double tapping on the back of the phone if you go over here to quick tap it just says that you can double tap on the back and i have set that to screenshot so for example i can just take it over here double tap and you can see a screenshot has been taken so these are a few of the gesture differences between them. Next, there are some differences in the UI as well. So if I go into the recents menu over here, you only see a screenshot option, whereas you get an option to select over here. Now you can just tap here and select any text from a particular uh, recent app, or you can just tap and hold over here to select as well and just get done with it. Not just that, you have the option of picking out pictures as well. So if you see over here, if I tap and hold, it just gets a picture out these features are not available on motorola but it is kind of a pixel exclusive feature so that's why you probably don't see it on motorola same thing goes with things like voice typing which you have over here this is an example of the voice typing feature on the pixels which is not present on motorola as of now this is a pixel exclusive feature so that's why we don't see it and it is really helpful so now you can just go back and say delete 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 clear all and that's how fantastically this works over here and it is a pixel exclusive feature talking of pixel exclusive features there are more like the recorder app over here it is different than the recorder app over here in motorola although it looks a bit similar but what happens is you get real-time transcriptions over here so that's really helpful and it can take you back and help you with searching certain keywords as well for example if i have it saved so let's say keyword and you can see what part of the voice note i have used that particular word also if you want to know about more pixel exclusive features which are definitely not existing in motorola you can check out a video over here i made last year there are a few additions to that list over here from the video up here now few other things which you get is motorola gets think shield as a hardware encryption on their particular phones and the pixel gets the titan m2 chip now for example we have a security hub on the pixels over here so that's something which is not present so if you go into security you just get options you get options for all your encryption and security options which is not uh, and on the pixels you get this specific page called the security hub which makes it very easily accessible to all things you would want so that was the comparison between these two softwares very surprising right there are a lot of things that are in motorola soft which are good enhancements to the experience and it is very close to actual stock android in ways which at least google intends android should work be it the dynamic theming be it few of the widgets if not all and all the basic features which are included which might or might not be included by some other skins motorola kind of makes sure to include it in their skin even in their budget offerings apart from a few things which might be exclusive to the pixel because that's how google is trying to market their devices so but if motorola goes on this way this software experience could be something really which would appeal to the enthusiast market something which oxygen os did for a long long time for for people like me at least and that's something that i'm actually looking forward to and i might be testing out a bit more of motorola phones in the near future because the software experience even on a 13 and a half thousand rupee phone is so good that i'm intrigued and want to know more about their more expensive offerings and what more does the hardware bring to the table and what more does motorola offer in terms of their software offerings or features in those particular models i hope that really helps and again stay tuned for the full review of the g52 it's going to be an interesting one find out about everything that you asked me in the comment section of my unboxing and initial impressions thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll definitely catch you in the next one.